Hey y'all, welcome back. Today is one of those days where we have a list of items that we really need to get done. And the weather's changed down here in South Louisiana. We went from dry and hot to cool and rainy. And today is the only day that there's no prediction for rain for the next few days. So that's why we went ahead and came back to the swamp and we need to get our boat pulled out of this water. Now we did leave it in here for the whole summer. It was really, really nice and convenient to have back here because we were able to go fish whenever we wanted to. We didn't have to worry about trying to pull it down. This long hill and this drop off and all these things. And now is the time to get it because this water can get extremely high in a hurry. And even if it doesn't get that high that fast, we still have to slop in here through the mud to try to drag it out. And of course, it's not gonna be just as simple as, oh, let's just go ahead and pull it out because there's no air in the tire. So that's the first problem. <laughs> And here we have the hated propane tank converted into an air tank. Now, I don't know why we got so much hate about doing this last time, but I love it. It works great. <laughs> I we didn't wonder why. We didn't have to throw our propane tank away that didn't work anymore. And we made use for it to put air in to caddy around the air up boat trailer tire. I think it's great. Now, in case y'all missed the last time we had the discussion about this propane tank, this was a propane tank that had a valve with a safety switch that was hung up. So we weren't able to fill it. It was no good anymore. So we unscrewed the valve, took all the little safety stuff out of it, just put in <laughs> safety stuff. So we just put in a, a nipple, a T, a valve, and an air fitting. So that's what we use for an air tank. We was able to repurpose the old propane tank and get some use out of it. While we're back here, I'm definitely gonna be taking use of this score. <laughs> I need this to put on my plants. I've got a few plants around the house and I hate that you can see the dirt so I'm going to take some of this moss. You know up north you have to go to like Hobby Lobby and buy that. that so Down fun. here we get it straight from nature. That's right. <laughs>
pretty good. A little Maybe. adjustment there. Yeah, a little slight adjustment. A little to the right, a little to the left. Get just right. Okay, well first off, we need to start this statement by saying the SS Minnow has seen a lot and been through a lot, okay? <laughs> the SS Minnow is pretty old. <laughs> old girl's been around the block. But anytime your adjustment screws, your tightening screws are wore out, stripped, you know, you can always use some door and window shims. Sometimes they're a pain in the butt to get loose. But that means that it works good. <laughs> That means your trolley motor's not gonna fall off. Two, four, and a one before. Perfect. The otters back here have been wreaking havoc on these muscles. The water is usually never this low. It's the lowest I've ever seen it in my life. So as the water recedes, it reveals all these muscles. And these coons and otters have been having a field day with them. Today's video is sponsored by Internova. Internova is a portable power station with the high capacity reaching 600 watts. This high output provides double electricity than some of the products that are out there that are in the same price range. With lots of great features, this is an excellent value for money and maybe even one of the most cost effective among similar products. Internova also has this 100 watt solar panel. It is IP68 protected against dust and immersion up to three meters for 30 minutes. It is the highest waterproof rating in the industry. These solar panels are made up of monocrystalline silicone solar cells, which have the highest efficiency of all the commercial solar cells. Internova can absolutely be used with the solar panels, but also if you're having a day like we're having today, you can use the carport setup, or you can use the regular outlet. Internova charges the portable power station to 80% in just one hour. Many other brands of equivalent capacity require about four or five hours of charging. Also, Internova went with lithium ion phosphate batteries. Y'all have heard us talk about lithium ion phosphate batteries before, and we know how much safer they are than other batteries on the market. Internova comes with two flashlights, multiple settings, and lots of features that you can change to fit your style, just as well as this handle right here. You have the option to carry this like a handle or you can assemble the strap that it comes with and wear it like I do right here. This is just one of Internova's products. They have multiple power stations on their website, which is gonna be linked below in the description. So y'all make sure to head down there and thank you Internova for sponsoring this video. Once again, while we're back here, we're gonna go ahead and cut down our cypress knee that we need for our lamps. Outdoorsy furniture school. <laughs> Gotta love it. Country modern. If y'all remember our first ever video that we put on YouTube, we did some cypress knee lamps and those were kind of a little trial for us. We really, 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 really liked them and we are gonna be putting a lot more nature in the house. So these cypress knee lamps are gonna be perfect. So today we're gonna to go ahead and go back here while it's also still dry where we can get to some really tall, pretty ones and go ahead and cut those down too. It 
it's a little big on the bottom. It's going to take up a little real estate, but it's got some character. I was thinking that I didn't like how big it was on the bottom. Okay, I'm going to move over to this one. That one's too plain. Or just too hot. <laughs> this part is too cold. And this cypress knee is just right. <laughs> Do you like this cypress knee? This is the one. Okay, we need two. You gotta find us one more, okay? And that's the reason right there that I really enjoy shopping at River Bottom Home Furnishing. <laughs> At River Bottom Home Furnishing, you will never find two of the same thing. What about that one? It's leaning, but we can cut it straight. Perfect. You like it? I really do. It's got a little character. You got it. Oh, your hair looks so pretty. Where do you get your hair done? Oh, it's beautiful. Thank you. You gonna put some in yours? <laughs> Your turn, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Rather stylish. Aru garu. He's good. I, I wouldn't go that far. Look at mine. I've got leaves in mine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was so fun. Luckily, these are a little bit smaller than some of the cypress knees that we have seen back there. So we are going to be able to put these on the miter saw today to cut them because we want them to be flat. What we're trying to cut it for is, of course, a flat bottom, but you also have to take into consideration the top knot that you're going to be drilling into or the top of the knee that you're going to be drilling into because you want that to be as straight as possible as well. I think that the last time that we did some lamps like this was almost three, at least two and a half years ago, if not three years ago. 
and we used a different type of polyurethane. So this one's the acrylic style, which is going to be water-based, and the other kind that we used was oil-based. So that meant cleaning-wise, we had to use something like paint thinner or mineral spirits, and with this, you can just clean it with soap and water. So we're going to see how this goes this time, and we'll keep you all updated. Would that be good <laughs> played back in slow motion? <laughs> this can't be a shaking, not stirred. It's got to be a stirred, not shaking. Okay. I don't have any idea why. If anybody knows why that you're not supposed to shake this, by all means, please let us know. That's one of the big things that says, though, do not shake. I feel like arts and crafts. Some people go do those, like, what's it called? Wine and paints. Paints yeah. and wine. You know, like date night. Oh. And it's like. I think I've seen that show. That's where like they had the pottery on the wheel and the guys like holding the pottery behind the girl, they're hugging and they're creating like You can do it right here. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we look the same. <laughs> Welcome to Cajun Country Lamp Shop, where today's creation is tomorrow's illumination. <laughs> Need a bright future? Start with Cypress News. <laughs> Might not be able to lead the path in your life, but it can lead you to the kitchen. These Cypress Knees future is so bright, they're gonna have to wear shades. You ever heard about the man that painted the Cypress Knee lamp? No. Me neither. <laughs> you know, we didn't have any lamps. We had a real need. What's your favorite memory of being in the swamp? What's a good one? One of my oldest memories starts way, way back when I was only knee high. <laughs> One time whenever I was pretty young, in a really close area to where we've got these cypress knees, we had set a trot line and baited this trot line trying to catch some catfish. Well, I picked up the trot line and it was pulling really hard, so we thought we had a really big catfish. Come to find out, after we went down the line to where the hook was at, or one of the hooks was at, and there was about a seven foot alligator hung in the back foot. Oh no. And how big was the boat that you were in? Oh, it was like a 14 foot boat. Oh, okay. But, needless to say. Needless to say. <laughs> he was way less impressed and enthused to be on that trot line. So getting that sucker unhooked off of that trot line was not a fun task, because he was already mad. Now our knees are still going to be drying for the next little bit, but it has finally come to the part where we tell y'all exactly what Jim has found. Now, let me just make a few statements before we start this conversation. I truly am going to enjoy watching this process happen, and I love stuff like this. So it's going to be really interesting to learn more, especially from who other than right here. Who would not want you as a teacher? But, on a side note, I will say that she was less than impressed when this thing showed up at the house. A million percent I was. <laughs> so, without further ado. Let's show sure. So it all started here. This was the first truck that Jim convinced me was a great idea to buy. Okay. So let's just disregard the other one for right now. So let's just, let's just get into this details. Let me tell you the thought process. My old truck, I bought brand new, has 365,000 miles on it. It still looks new, still runs new, but the laws of nature are against it. It's got a ton of miles on it and I'm really trying to preserve it. And I got to thinking all these little trips to Home Depot or running here, running there, I really didn't want to keep stacking the miles on that truck. Buying a new one, is not going to happen for me. I just can't do it. They're too expensive. So, kind of a nostalgic thing. I wanted an early 90s Chevrolet truck. I didn't want just any early 90s Chevrolet truck. I wanted one with the right VIN, the right package from the factory. That way, whenever I put it back together, it would be pretty valuable, be even more valuable to me. So, what would be that right VIN and those things that you were looking for? Not telling y'all my secrets. 
Now, before we get to showing you this thing close, <laughs> I am totally aware that this thing is rough as a limestone slip and slide, but we're going to take care of that. Y'all bear with us. You're going to notice the first thing. This awful paint job, that's one. Blue door. Red door. I mean, this is this will probably buff right out. I don't know. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> now the smell in here. <laughs> I, you know, I wish that I could describe how this truck smells. It's like it's the like sweat. It's like <laughs> sweaty socks that time forgot about. It's got a chrome breather. This has got to be a race car. <laughs> Look at this junk. Oh, I bet there's not supposed to be a hole there. It looks like rats have gnawed a hole in the bottom of that. Very custom. <laughs> Probably a one of a kind spark plug wire holding hoodies right there. And I know y'all are probably thinking, it is hard to imagine anybody being excited about getting this particular truck. What? I don't understand <laughs> the problem. I mean, it needs a little bit of body work, you know. It's missing the whole corner. Yeah, <laughs> it does have its own set of issues. Now, the truck does run and drive. Obviously, we got it here. But I had to change the throttle position sensor just to get it home. And that's uh, one of the small details of a long list, as you can tell. But you're probably thinking, man, he is going to spend a fortune buying parts for this truck because it needs everything, like everything, except the taillights. Taillights are really good shape. <laughs> if you were wondering how I outsmarted the parts process, exhibit B. We have this cream puff right here. I'm pretty sure that this was bought brand new by the original owner. I mean, it's a pretty slick little unit. It's got a couple little minor flaws up here. Can't pay attention to that. That's detail. Can't get hung up on the detail. But in all reality, this truck was just gone through mechanically. And the person that owned this truck was in a wreck. They didn't get hurt, but it did mess the front of the truck up and they totaled the truck. So here we are. We have a bed that needs a paint job that actually has the back of the bed intact. We have a bed cover. We have, look, we have more tail lights. Oh, joy. They look good. <laughs> There's just a lot of stuff on this truck that I can just take and put onto this one without having to buy them. Now, I bought both of these trucks. It's gonna be some work, but I bought both of these trucks to build one good one for about the price that the average person pays on a nice ride and long one. So this is going to be kind of one of those things that I work on on my spare time. Not sure when that'll be, probably one to two o'clock in the morning in that time frame. But if it's something that y'all want to keep up with, y'all want us to throw little crumbs in the video every once in a while to see the progress, y'all let us know. If not, that's cool too. You'll just notice a lot different looking truck in the future. Now y'all don't ask me how Jim convinced me to buy these two trucks. Because truly I'm baffled myself to be completely honest with you. I have seen some of the things Jim is going to be doing to this and I am so excited to get our hands dirty started on this project, but we need to first worry about the things that are important like homesteading things, you know, <laughs> like moving containers, finishing the inside of the house, oh. lots of welding to do, you know, the not so fun things. It's looking like that one to three o'clock in the morning window is about all I'm going to have. Absolutely. Oh, well, I'll make the best of it. And this is how they turned out. It's just something about taking something from raw nature and turning it into something that we can use every day, and it looks super cool. If y'all want to know all the details on how we did this, you can go back to our first video, which I will link at the end of this video. Now, keep in mind, it is our first video on YouTube, but if you did want to know how we did this process, it will be listed at the end.